Good morning all. Uh, this is Banggood's Oscilloscope DIY kit. It's an oscilloscope for £15 or $23. But is it any good? Well, let's find out. Let's build it. So in the pack we get uh, two manuals, Chinese and English, packing list, um, cable which is a couple of crop clips to BNC plug. We get the main circuit board with the microcontroller already soldered on, which is good news because that's a very fine pitch device. We get a bag of through hole bits and connectors and whatnot. We get a bag of surface mount components. So I'm gonna put those on first and also the display. Let's take a look at that. So this is a 2.4 inch TFT LCD. Now it doesn't say anywhere what the resolution of this is. Um, I'm kind of thinking 240 by 320, but it could be higher than that. I can't find any information on the part number that's on here. Now the manual says start with the resistors, but it doesn't mention the surface mount devices. So I guess that an earlier version of this had them pre-fitted. That's probably why they've supplied this, because this does mention all the surface mount devices and shows where they go. So I guess they, there was a change there's the surface mount uh, quad op amp. So I'm going to use this to uh, do all my surface mount components first. So that's all the surface mount components on there. Resistors, uh, the quad op amp and this uh, linear regulator here, this LM1117. Uh, Soldering is not beautiful but probably good enough. So now on to the remaining components. So here's the item on Banggood's website. Uh, this is the DIY Digital Oscilloscope Kit, Electronic Learning Kit. It's uh, 15 pounds and two pence. Now I'll just switch that to US dollars. And uh, there it is, it's $22.99. Now I have to disclose that uh, I didn't pay for this item. It was sent to me at no cost for me to do this review. Right, so on with the assembly, uh, step one, resistors. Now it says here, always meter the resistor values before soldering. Well, I will if there's any ambiguity, but um, if they're readable, I shan't bother. Now there's little tick boxes here, which is quite handy, so I can tick these off as I go. So let's get started. Now the resistors and capacitors were in this separate bag. There are also three little chokes in here, or inductors. They're all 100 microhenries, so that's brown, black, brown, so that looks fine. So the resistors are these little 8th watt ones, and then I need to uh, locate the capacitors from this lot. Uh, so the first resistor are these three, 100K. Now I've got uh, brown, black, black, orange here, um, which in four band should be 100K. I think I will meter these just to make sure I've set off on the right foot here. Right, that's all the resistors and the three inductors up here. You do have to watch these colours. Um, I misread a red for a brown and got R3 and R1 the wrong way around. So I had to pull both of those and put them back in. So it is worth um, making a note uh, of all the colours and as they say, measure the resistors um, if they're a little bit ambiguous. The browns and reds do look quite similar. So following the sequence on the manual here, I've now done the USB socket, the crystal, the diodes up here, and the five uh, tactile push switches. Well, it's coming on, but uh, in my haste, I've soldered the pin headers onto the bottom board rather than on the back of the display board. But I'm kind of thinking it probably doesn't matter too much because these uh, were meant to go on the main board and I can just put these on the display board instead and the connectors holding the display and will just be upside down. Can't see a major problem with that. Right, well that's everything on the board including a little loop link there for the test waveform, 1 kilohertz, 3.3 volts and uh, you short JP3. So now the next thing is to put power to it, 9 volts check that you're getting 3.3 volts here and then if you are you short JP4 and I assume that puts power to the microcontroller. Um, it was quite tricky to do this probably because my soldering iron is not temperature controlled and I did have some difficulty particularly with 
these square pads where the um, connection is to ground, so it's to the ground plane, via these little spokes, which is a sort of thermal connection, but they're very, very close, so it uh, draws the heat out of the iron very quickly. Now, I don't know whether a temperature-controlled iron would have made that easier to do, but it was a bit of a struggle on some of the connections. You can see I haven't bothered connecting the grounding points or the anchor points for these uh, slide switches. And as for the pins that hold the BNC socket in, well, they're part of the actual metalwork itself, so that's going to need a lot of heat. I haven't even... Uh, well, I made an attempt to connect them, but uh, it was a very poor attempt. So, yeah, it was quite tricky. It took quite a long time. Uh, what's the time now? It's taken about two and a half hours, but I have been going really quite quickly. Um, so let's put some power on, see if I'm getting the 3.3 volts. So for the 9 volt supply, I'm going to use this uh, power bank, which has a multi-voltage output. I've set that to 9. So uh, power's on the other end on this plug. That should plug straight into there. Let's do it and find out. Let's put that there. Plug it in. Okay, well, nothing's happened. I'm going to check the 3.3 uh, volts now. Well, that looks okay. That's measuring 3.26 volts. So now I guess I put a solder short onto JP4, which is in there. So let's do that now. Okay, so I've put the display on. Now, interestingly, this power bank uh, puts out 3.7 volts even when it's not boosting when it's off so of course the display is slightly lit up so I'm not sure what uh, it's going to make of that but anyway let's uh, power it on and see what it does okay uh, firmware version little splash screen and uh, there it is now there's no trace at the moment now, I don't think that's 32240. If you look at the Graticule, it's really fine. That's quite nice. Uh, no trace, though, so I need to connect the uh, BNC through to the test point. So let's do that now. Well, now there seems to be a, a fairly terminal problem. The liquid crystal display has completely packed up. Um, it's just not doing anything. It's all lit up but there's no information on it. Uh, if I press reset, the little green LED down there flashes twice. So it looks like the microcontroller's running. Uh, there's 3.3 volts. There's 5 volts, 3.3. There's a positive AV voltage, but there's no negative AV voltage. That probably explains why there was no trace. Um, so that's probably fixable, but this display, I think, is a bigger problem. If I ground the input and then unground it, the little LED there, briefly flashes. So it look, looks like the microcontroller is triggering and booting. There's a very definite double flash there, but absolutely nothing on the display. And I've tried everything. I've tried remaking all these solder joints, all the solder joints on the back, but there's absolutely nothing doing. Double flash on the green LED, no display. So um, it's packed up. This display was working fine and then suddenly just went completely blank all of a sudden. So I don't know what's going on there, but it looks like I'm going to have to try and get a replacement display for this. Um, not much more I can do at the moment, unfortunately. So the question I'm asking myself is, did I kill this or did it just fail of its own volition? Um, did I kill it with this power bank? Because as I say, if you switch this off, press and hold off, this display is very slightly still lit up because this thing puts out the 3.7 volts of the batteries themselves um, even without the boost circuit running you then switch this on flashes three times and the power comes on but notice that double flash on the green led so i mean when this goes from 3.7 volts to 9 volts the microcontroller appears to boot normally microcontroller, as I say, appears to be running because I can do things like click the sensitivity switches. Yes, and you get um, a brief flash on the trigger LED. So to my mind, the scope is running, but it's just not writing anything to the display. I think the display has failed. The CPU is OK. So I'm going to ask Banggood if I can have a new display. 
Now the other problem I've got is that the negative analog voltage isn't working. I've got 5 volts there, I've got 3.3 volts there, I've got 4.85 volts on the AV plus, but on the AV minus I've got 0.6 volts. Now that should be minus 5 volts and it's generated by this big inductor, uh, the diode there, the Schottky diode, the transistors, then it's regulated down with this 79LO5 to minus 5 volts. But the circuit requires that there's a pulse train coming out of the microcontroller and that's what I need to check next. And so irony of ironies, I now need to use my O1 oscilloscope to try and fault find the Banggood oscilloscope. Hmm. Well now here's further proof that the microcontroller is running because we're getting on here, which is the test point, this one kilohertz, is it one kilohertz? Uh, let's have a look. Yes, that's exactly one kilohertz. Um, test signal. Now if I press reset, that briefly disappears and then immediately comes back and we get the double flash again. So that is a microcontroller derived test signal that the uh, ARM microcontroller on here is supplying. So the microcontroller certainly seems to be running. Um, it does seem to need the display though on there, otherwise this green light flashes continuously and it doesn't actually give you this test signal. Let me just do that. So with the display not on there, this green light does this repeated double flash, almost like it's an error, and it doesn't switch on the um, the little one kilohertz. It is one kilohertz, isn't it? Yeah, test signal. So I'm convinced that this microcontroller is actually all right. But there's no signal coming out of the um, microcontroller to drive this negative voltage generator. That's on that resistor there and there's absolutely nothing either side of that. So why is it not producing that? Would it need the display on in order to produce that signal? That's the only way I can do that is put the display on and then measure that AV minus. Let's try that. And uh, no, even with the display on, measuring AV minus on the scope, you can see that when I connect it up, it just goes positive by 0.6 volts. So there are two faults, a failed display and the microcontroller is not generating um, a pulse train, it must just be a simple square wave I would guess, to drive the negative voltage generator circuit. I have got that circuit actually, I found a PDF of it, I'll, um, I'll show you that. So here's a PDF of the scope circuit diagram. Um, I'm not sure where this came from now, I can make it available if anyone wants this. Um, there's a signal called VGen that comes out of the microcontroller and it drives first this NPN transistor. That then drives this PNP transistor, which turns the positive 8 point something volts here um, through the big inductor and the Schottky diode into minus 8 point something volts. And then that's regulated down with the 7905, the negative voltage regulator. Now I've got my 8.6 volt positive here, but no pulse chain here. There's nothing coming out of this VGen. And that just goes back to, well, where is it? The microcontroller, which is here. Let me just scroll that down, which is up here. So one of these signals here is VGen. Yes, it's that one there, VGen. So straight out of the microcontroller and into that um, circuit. But I'm not getting that VGen signal. I don't know why. because in all other ways, the microcontroller appears to be running fine. It's a mystery, but uh, suffice to say that my scope doesn't work. So it leaves me with a question. Um, regarding this display, which did work for a couple of minutes, did it just die or did I kill it? What do you think from the evidence I've presented? And then the other one, which is the microcontroller, which appears to run, it goes through the motions of doing a reset and being triggered by these input signals. Of course, it won't do it now. There. 
So it goes through the motions of running, it produces this test signal, the one kilohertz, but it's not producing the waveform that generates this negative analog voltage. It's a real mystery. I'm going to see if I can get a new display. Um, if that doesn't work on this scope, uh, if Banggood are good enough to send me a whole new oscilloscope, then I'll have to go through the two and a half hours building the whole thing all over again. But there it is. It's a fail, unfortunately. My oscilloscope doesn't work. That's, uh, that's as far as I can go. Cheerio.